good afternoon guys uh, i am surya uh, the founder of uh, backstage pass institute of gaming and technology so let me uh, introduce myself uh, uh, to start with so you know uh, so i started uh, backstage pass in 2010 so when there was not too many game companies in india so the whole reason uh, for me to start backstage pass is uh, again i wanted to uh, always start uh, developing games so this was one of the reason and then the problem i faced initially was the skill talent so when well, it's been a huge problem even for me it took me almost a year i couldn't really get good guys to get into it and then uh, start a game company uh so then i thought you know why don't we uh, uh start a school where you know there are a lot of other uh, game companies which have a similar problem so yeah so uh when i started backstage pass in 2010 and way before that so in 2002 uh, uh i graduated from vancouver film school uh in uh, 3d animation and visual effects so i was even uh, you know trained to uh, model characters and stuff uh you know for games etc and uh, my passion always was uh, animating characters so whether it was for visual effects animation or gaming yeah. and uh, so uh, i worked for a couple of uh, projects where you know they won uh, awards uh, in india uh, one of it won actually national award uh, for the best visual effects uh, category and uh, some of them uh, were screened at cannes film festival uh, and then uh, i also developed uh, uh game a lot of game art assets and i used to even animate uh characters uh this for the, for the companies in the us and uh, so it's been uh, uh, around uh, 15 years for me in the industry so far uh, it's uh, com- it's combined uh, animation visual effects and gaming so uh today's topic is about uh, the importance of uh, game specific educational courses in game careers so uh, let me start uh, with uh, the experience i had uh, it's uh, you know while uh, 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 taking in students for our uh, school backstage pass so i had a lot of these uh, inquiries from uh, students from uh, pan india where a lot of them uh, I had problem with parents uh, not really uh, interested in gaming so as a career for whatever reason maybe you know they play games all the time they don't study uh, and uh, there's uh, one of the student uh, who was very passionate about passionate about games and he wants to get into the industry but the problem is you know the parents again the, this guy came to me and uh, he said sir uh, i have this problem and then no why don't you talk to my parents right and uh, well we had to talk to their parents but this was in way back in 2010 where parents were not at all interested uh, so there were hardly uh, a very less number of uh, game companies maybe around uh, 30 40 game companies around that time uh, but if you look at now so the the parents perspective has changed Uh, they're looking at uh, uh, not just engineering but various different courses uh, uh, where there are, uh, even gaming is one of it and uh, they have realized that gaming has a bright future and it's growing really fast in india so uh, so uh according to aict so aict stands for uh, all india council for technical education uh, so uh, according to them only 6% of the engineering graduates in india are actually employable every year and this is true uh, if you see there uh, only 
uh, few companies could, could actually hire skilled talent from engineering colleges, and the rest of them are, you know, they just join any odd jobs. Uh, I've, I, I knew uh, one guy who had completed his B.Tech, and he was working in an office as an office boy. So it's pretty sad. Uh, it could be, you know, it may not be really his problem, but it could be even engineering colleagues who don't really focus on uh, hands-on training, right? So, uh, well, uh, so it's not just about teaching theory uh, in the school, but uh, it's also about you know, teaching them the skills, which is really important for the industry. Uh, so uh, this is an interesting study So I found online. So USA produces around one lakh uh, engineers per year for a dollar 16 trillion economy. So whereas India produces around 15 lakh engineers per year for a dollar two trillion economy. So just see the amount of difference uh, we have compared to the U.S. So uh, and today, uh, if you see uh, IT jobs are getting uh, saturated, uh, there are not too many jobs around, and then uh, uh, you, know, you have uh, more than six lakh uh, engineers uh, graduating every year, and a lot of them are jobless. Right, so. There are various different careers uh, these guys can actually get into. Uh, it's not just engineering uh, right now. Uh, so, uh, so as I said, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, top uh, career tracks today, uh, other than engineering, which has uh, excellent career opportunities. And currently, uh, most uh, parents prefer gaming to be one of the best uh, career options. Uh, because I keep experiencing uh, very regularly. So one of the parents uh, recently came to me and then um, he said he just wanted his son to join in a gaming course. So he wants him to develop uh, games because he's very passionate about it. So that's the kind of change we have right now. So when compared to uh, uh, eight years ago, eight or nine years ago. So, uh, so today, uh, game design and development is one of the hottest uh, career uh, options. And uh, one of the uh, key uh, things we have uh, uh, observed is, you know, uh, uh, parents actually are allowing uh, their kids to play games, video games. Uh, and which was uh, uh, not really happening uh, way before. Uh, the recent uh, study uh, says that uh, uh, you know, games actually benefit children in various ways. So one is uh, it improves hand-eye coordination, uh, so which is really important, and uh, it also developed fine motor skills. Uh, so you see, uh, I have uh, read uh, an article where uh, there's this Chinese guy who, who actually controls the, uh, the controller, so he presses the buttons 16 times a second. So that's the precision he has, and uh, uh, that's one thing. And uh, it also improves uh, problem uh, solving skills. So there are uh, games like uh, strategic games, like uh, StarCraft, uh, which uh, improves the problem solving skills, and then uh, the logical reasoning, uh, the puzzle games around, uh, which help students, uh, sorry, uh, the kids to actually think around and then uh, uh, improve their logical reasoning. It also obviously builds computer literacy. So there are games uh, uh, which are, uh, uh, which actually help them uh, bond with the parents uh, which is uh, actually really important. Uh, so there are parents who play games with uh, their kids. So that's when even the kids open up with the parents. So they start talking to them much freely. Then they share their ideas. Then the, 
and even the parents reciprocate the same thing to them. So, uh, so there are uh, social impact games that reward uh, players uh, who complete a task like cleaning the garbage in the locality, making friends, helping neighbors. Uh, all these are gaining uh, popularity. Actually, personally, it really helps them out uh, in general. So uh, today, uh, India, if you, uh, I don't know if you uh, guys know about it, India is uh, in the top five uh, global uh, uh, gaming market. So in 2016, Indian gaming industry reached global uh, top five. So it is uh, thanks to uh, uh, the mobile games, uh, the smartphones we have, and then uh, it's a uh, uh, increase in the, the the population we have and the uh, smart smart uh, uh, phone penetration. Uh, so uh, so way back uh, in 2010, we hardly had uh, uh, about uh, 30 to 40 game companies in India. Where in you know, today there are more than 500 game companies. Uh, so this is. Uh, uh, you know, one of the fastest growing uh, industry here in India. Uh, so game downloads uh, estimated at 2.2 billion in 2017, and, uh, uh, and it is expected to reach 5.4 billion by 2020. Uh, the Indian game industry is currently valued at dollar uh, 300 million. Uh, that's uh, 2,000 crores. So with a population of 1.3 uh, billion people and uh, two thirds of them under the age of 35, India has the world's largest youth population. So uh, with a distinct uh, advantage, India has the potential to becoming one of the world's leading markets for gaming. Gaming industry in India, uh, the industry is worth around uh, dollar eight ninety million, uh, and five thirty million smartphone users. So more than uh, three fifty game companies compared to around uh, forty in two thousand ten. So actually, that's uh, five hundred game companies. Uh, and there are uh, two startups every month coming up here in India. So that's uh, quite a encouraging uh, thing. Uh, and industry estimated at dollar one point one billion by two thousand twenty. Uh, so this is an interesting statistic. Uh, the average revenue per user currently amounts to rupees five seventy five uh, uh, Indian rupees. Sorry, so it's around uh, seventy seventy dollars approximately. So, uh, so do you really need, do you really need a degree to work in games industry? And I would say yes. So it's a it's kind of a uh, needed thing right now. So we have a game company in Hyderabad who say you know we want uh, students who spend time for four years learning to develop games. So this is very much needed. I would say. Uh, there are not just one company, but uh, there are multiple com companies coming up. They say, you know, they want uh, students who have the three, three to four years uh, of study to get into uh, games. It, I mean, they have their own reasons. At the same time, you know, it also helps them, uh, uh, you know, to go further and uh, do their higher studies abroad. So, which is, uh, you know, it is 16 years of education is uh, needed. Um, so the importance of having a recognized degree in gaming. So uh, you know, one is it has to be a university certified uh, degree. Uh, so uh, the opportunity and space to develop uh, both your uh, education and also the portfolio. So the portfolio, so if you have a degree and you don't have a portfolio, it doesn't really work in the industry. So you need to have those skills to build your portfolio. Uh, whether it's art, design, or development. And um, it helps to uh, 
build your uh, foundation skills and uh, the opportunity to learn core subjects uh, the core subjects uh, in design art or programming again uh, so uh, the op it's, it's an opportunity again to explore uh, present tools and software so a lot of different softwares used in uh, gaming uh, so one could be uh, you know in art if you talk about uh, you know photoshop maya max stuff uh, and there are a lot of uh, internship opportunities around in the industry so uh, once the student is in the final year you know uh, students can get into uh, internships and uh, you know obviously you know the company needs them and then you know they want to before actually joining them full time they want them to train the company wants them uh, wants the students to be trained uh, and it's good for the students because you know they also have uh, better ex exposure to the industry uh, the base for the master's program in India and abroad, as I said, uh, uh, this education, formal education creates a base for the students uh, to go f uh, and study abroad. So five uh, compelling uh, reasons for choosing gaming as a career. So uh, games industry in India is uh, growing really fast. Uh, a competitive uh, field for someone who is passionate about games with a combination of uh, creativity, technology, and fun. So game developers are in huge demand today, so due to the increase in demand for uh, online casual games. So uh, there are uh, real life applications and increased demand for gamification. So a lot of these games, uh, uh, you know, uh, so uh, I'm talking about uh, simulations which are used in military, uh, you know, uh, and then uh, driving skills. Uh, a lot of them are used for, uh, you know, training uh, pilots. Uh, so that's uh, to uh, fly an aircraft. So uh, there are many career opportunities uh, in the in gaming industry. Uh, that, uh, some of them are uh, as artists and designers, producers, game programmers, sound engineers, uh, UI designers, and testers. Uh, so, uh, so there are a lot of uh, you know uh, institutions uh, around uh, which teach gaming as a career. And they are uh, quite accessible today. Game training is uh, you know, unless they are uh, they are trained to develop those particular skills needed for the industry. So. Yeah, game designers, programmers, artists, testers, producers, project managers uh, are in high demand today. And uh, there are a lot of uh, multinational companies. They wanted to come to India, so in the US, U uh, uh, Europe, Japan. But, uh, but the main issue they're finding is uh, the lack of talent. So there are not too many institutions in India, and we actually need more. Uh, so I keep uh, getting a lot of inquiries every week. Every week I get calls from game companies, Pan India. I get calls from companies in Hyderabad, Pune, Bangalore. They say, I want uh, talent. I need 10 developers tomorrow. So it's, I still don't have them. So because there are a lot of uh, companies in Hyderabad, and they take them, uh, for, you know, uh, they recruit them, and then I don't have any for the rest of the country. Right, so uh, so we need more uh, gaming institutions, and then someone who actually focus on gaming only uh, is very much needed, and uh, a very few specific uh, game training uh, uh, institutions in India, and uh, lack of inexperienced trainers. There are not too many skilled trainers 
again no we focus really on uh, mentoring so it's not ju just about teaching students how to uh, uh, you know model character or uh, you know rig them or you know teach them programming or design and stuff but they should actually develop games so once you keep developing multiple games that's when you actually learn your skills you know where you're going wrong so and how do you actually sell games is really important thing so well, one thing I keep uh, saying, uh, a lot of people, you know, they whenever I meet them, you know, they say you're into animation. So I say, so animation is different from gaming. So there are a lot of uh, different aspects where animation is very much different than gaming. Uh, so so basically, uh, gaming is more uh, real time. So it is animation, you actually uh, animate characters uh, or, uh, you know, objects or whatever, and then uh, you render them. So, so whereas gaming, it's on spot. So, you know, you play a game, you uh, find a bug, and it doesn't really work. So, you know, there's a lot, lot more challenging uh, than animation. How to start uh, a career in games? So uh, I would say a degree in uh, game art, design and development, uh, and uh, build as many games as possible during the course. So this really helps them to uh, improve their skills, problem solving, etc., and uh, get an internship at a game company during or after the course. Uh, create your own website or blog to showcase your uh, game's work, uh, post your uh, work on gaming forums and ask for feedback. So this is a really good uh, uh, thing. Uh, there are a lot of uh, gaming communities around. And then uh, uh, you, know, you can get a lot of feedback and then keep improving on your uh, games. And you also have to attend a lot of uh, gaming workshops, events around, and then you know, build your network. It's really important for you to be in the industry and then uh, uh, be part of it. And you have to participate in game design and development competitions. Uh, so there are a couple of uh, game design and development competitions around which uh, you know, again, your participation is more important. It's not just about winning. So we actually see a lot of other games, uh, you know, which might do well, maybe better than you. So it's really as an opportunity uh, uh, to make sure, uh, you know, you learn something from it. And uh, you should get an... Uh, yeah, so uh, should get an uh, entry level uh, job as a game artist, designer, and developer. So you know, just get into the industry and then you know, gain some experience. Uh, so the career in game industry. So how does it work? So gaming is one of the largest segments of the whole entertainment industry, considered uh, as the hottest profession widely across the world. Uh, a competitive field for someone who is passionate about games with a combination of creativity, technology, and fun. Uh, so the game developers today are uh, in huge demand. Uh, this is a, due to the increase in demand uh, for uh, online casual games. So uh, the people who ask me, you know, uh, parents, especially their uh, son or daughter, they are working as game testers in game companies. They say, is there any growth in this? So is this a real job? So I would say yes. They are really important for uh, you know, developing a game. So without the testers, uh, it's really hard to uh, you know, really build a good game. So game testers are actually beta testers. Um, so what they do is they uh, play the game and uh, break the game. Uh, so what that means is they actually find bugs in the game to make sure uh, you know they are taken care of and uh, uh, the game runs smooth. 
and uh, so these days even game testers are uh, actually paid well really well and it's definitely a, a excellent career uh, op op option too so there are uh, other uh, alternative career uh, opportunities so we talk about programming uh, so game programmers uh, these guys can actually work as software programmers too in an AIT uh, companies. So uh, they are skilled uh, in uh, you know coding in C, C++, or Java, whatever you know. Uh, they can easily get into any software company. And similarly, you know, animation. So uh, you have concept artists, modeling, texture artists, lighting. So, which is also used in animation and also visual effects. There are other uh, career opportunities like uh, digital media, visual communication, and of course, testing. So the skills required to become a game designer. So attention to detail. Uh, so you should have good uh, storytelling skills, uh, strong written and verbal communication, basic visual design and drawing skills, creating levels in a game, basic knowledge of programming, at least at uh, scripting level. Should be fluent in uh, a few 2D and uh, 3D softwares like Photoshop, 3ds Max, and Maya. So the whole reason is, uh, you know, uh, they should be able to communicate with uh, the programmers as well as the artists at the same time, which is very important for a game designer. So the game artist, uh, you know, he should have really good drawing skills uh, in order to develop a concept art. Uh, you should have strong understanding of uh, human and animal anatomy. Uh, Skills in uh, Photoshop is really important. And then, uh, you know, they should have uh, good skills in uh, uh, a few softwares like uh, 3ds Max, Photoshop, and Maya, where they can actually start uh, modeling, texturing, and even animate characters. Uh, and uh, the most important thing is, you know, they should actually be able to fit into a team. So. You know, gaming is all about uh, working in a team uh, when you have designers, uh, artists, and programmers. So it's really important for them to actually communicate, brainstorm, and then work as a team. So uh, as for a programmer, uh, so the main uh, skill required is uh, mathematics, and uh, physics concepts. So a lot of, uh, uh, you know, for example, if you look at uh, a ball bouncing or, you know, you stepping onto uh, something, so a lot of coding involved mathematics uh, and uh, physics involved in it. So it's really important for them to understand and start coding the same thing. And, uh, you know, they should have skills in you know, programming in C, C++, especially you know when you are uh, uh, working on console games or AAA games then uh, well for unity uh, you will be needing uh, c sharp so yeah so, yeah, so uh, so I'll pretty much wrap uh, the thing but uh, before that uh, just give me a br let me give you a brief about uh, Backstage Pass, so we started in 2010 and then collaborated with uh, the university. Uh, we offer uh, undergraduate and uh, uh, advanced diploma programs in game design, art, and uh, programming. And, uh, you know, we have been having uh, very good support uh, from the industry right from uh, day one. And then, uh, you know, uh, good support from the uh, the government too, uh, because government has been really supporting us uh, in growing the industry together. So, uh, so we have won uh, a lot of uh, student awards uh, uh, right from 2013, uh, 2017, and then uh, 
we're probably expecting something this year too. Uh, so uh, students' participation in gaming events around the world. So we have students uh, who travel abroad in India uh, and participate in various gaming events. And they actually, some of them actually won these awards too. So this is, uh, this is a picture of uh, our uh, college. Uh, so where uh, students learn to code. We students even uh, uh, we have a sculpting uh, classes going on there. Uh, so uh, I'll wrap it up here. So if you have any questions, you know, you can uh, ask me. And then uh, there's a QR code here. You can scan it and then uh, give feedback if you have any. So uh, any questions? Uh, if a non-engineer is taking your course mm -hmm. and uh, he's taking a course to become a game programmer, right. then what are the prerequisites? And what is the level to which you can bring his programming knowledge? Let's say if he's starting from scratch or from very basic school level knowledge. Hmm. So uh, it's a good question. So uh, one is uh, the question is if he has a engineering degree and uh, you know he wants to get into the industry. That's what you mean, right? Non-engineer. So he wants to get into programming, right? Well, first thing uh, is, as I said, uh, mathematics and physics concepts are really important, even to learn programming. So uh, if he's a non-programmer or non-engineer, so he should learn basics of uh, C, C++ programming, even to get into the industry. So C, C++ programming is very basic. Uh, and that's when he actually can get into learning uh, uh, other uh, programming uh, subjects in gaming, so like you know, get into uh, network programming, artificial intelligence, gameplay, and graphics programming, and all that. Yeah. So, any more questions? So, I would kind of like to ask the opposite of what he asked. <coughs> So if suppose the person is an engineer, and uh, how is engineering coding different from what a game developer requires? So is there any difference, first of all, or if there is a difference, what is the difference? Right, so uh, so the, it's no difference. So C, C++ is the same, what you learn in uh, engineering as well as in gaming. The only thing is a lot of, so this is something we have actually experienced in the past. So we also offer advanced diploma programs. So where uh, we, there's a test in order to get into the uh, course. So we have found that a lot of uh, students who want to pursue uh, this course who have an engineering degree, they lack uh, basic skills in C, C++. So if you have C, C++ skills, you can easily develop the skills, the, the gaming skills, so game programming skills, I mean. so. Uh, is it is it necessary for a programmer to also know art? Is is that related? Not 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 really. So it's uh, quite important for him to understand game design, not really art. But he will be interacting with art while start while working for games, because obviously you know he has to take the uh, art into the game engine and then start working on it, right? So 